So what's with the gloomy look? Left someone dear behind? Uh, yeah. You could say that. Been there. So, Nord Sunday, you better buckle up. We've got some nasty weather coming in. I heard. Sadly, caring about storms is a luxury people in my line of work are rarely afforded. Oh, and what kind of work is that? Special agent. Violent crimes. Central Bureau. Well, shit. You there. This is a restricted crime scene. Vera England, Central Bureau. Oh, you're Agent England. Sorry for shouting at you. I'm Gabriel. Apology accepted. Now brief me, please. Certainly, ma'am. The victim is Carl Oscarson, age 33. Stabbed to death by an unknown assailant. He worked here as a carpenter and was found early this morning by a co-worker who's sitting over there by the window. Got it. Sorry about the state of the crime scene. We're not used to this sort of thing. Evidently. This entire room should have been evacuated. Staying clear of the body would have decreased the risk of contaminating evidence. Yeah, maybe we should have established a wider perimeter. Yes, I would highly advise that for next time. Got it. I'll strive to do better in the future. Good to hear. Now give me a second while I examine the body. Sure, I'll be here. So, is this where you use your x-ray vision? My what? Come on, you have to be aware of the rumors. How agents like you are supposed to be equipped with some kind of advanced cybernetics? Let's just say I'm good at what I do. We'll leave it at that. Oh, didn't mean to overstep my boundaries. Hush hush, got it. Postmortem, huh? That would suggest that he likely only touched the body after death. All right, we've got multiple knife-sized stab wounds to the chest. I don't see a murder weapon, so I take it none was found at the scene? That's right. All knives and sharp tools in the building have been accounted for, too. It looks like the victim was attacked directly from the front. I don't see any major defense wounds, so this was either a surprise attack, or the victim knew the perpetrator. What about any potential suspects, Constable? Did Carl have enemies? None as far as we know. He seemed to be well-liked among the guys here, but the man who found him might know more. There was a photo in his chest pocket. My picture of Alex. <sighs> I miss him. It's a bloody photograph of Carl and a young woman, taken fairly recently by the look of it. He's holding hands with the woman, but I can't discern her face. Too much damage to the photo. She's wearing a brass necklace. Could be relevant. Gabriel. Yeah? Okay, that's all I need for now. Very well, Agent.
Hey there. What's your name? I'm Alfred. Carl's friend. Well, we were friends. Now he's gone. Are you doing okay? Do you have somebody to talk to after this? I'll be okay. Please just ask your questions so I can go home. Why don't you tell me about what happened this morning? Okay. I get up early from my morning smoke. I keep my smokes in my locker, so I came in here. I saw Carl lying in the corner. It was still kind of dark, so I thought he'd fallen and hurt himself. I ran over to him. That's when I noticed the blood, and I guess I was kind of in shock, so I tried to stop the bleeding, but then I felt how cold he was. I yelled for help. The guys came running, and then Josef, our foreman, sent someone to go get the police. Okay. When was the last time you saw Carl alive? Late last night, around midnight. He stayed up with us playing cards, which is unusual. Unusual? How so? Well, it was rare for Carl to stick around in the evenings. He usually went out by himself. Oh. Do you know where he used to go? No idea. He didn't talk much about that. Maybe he went to the canteen to meet some friends. Anyway, Carl seemed a bit anxious last night. He seemed distracted. Got it. Thanks for the info. Can you tell me a little bit about Carl? Sure. I've known him since I started working here four years ago. We instantly hit it off. He had a great sense of humor. He used to be so cheerful, you know? Always kidding around, always with a smile on his face. But then about a year ago, something happened. He became absent-minded and humorless. I know people can change, but this came seemingly from nowhere. Huh. What do you think caused this shift? No idea. Whatever it was, he wouldn't confide in me about it. What's your opinion on the policeman over there? Gabriel is a good man. He's been a cop in Nordsund for quite a while. Have a look at this picture. Do you know who the woman is? Uh, yeah, that's just some old girlfriend of Carl's from ages ago. Is that so? It doesn't look that old. At least Carl looks about the same. Guess the guy aged well. Any other questions? You should know that it would not serve your best interests to hide information from me. By refusing to cooperate, you'll force me to escalate the situation with a formal interrogation at the police station. None of that is necessary. I'm only interested in finding Carl's murderer. I'm, I'm sorry. I gave him a promise. Well, the lady in the photo, Carl is still seeing her. Well, was, I suppose. Why wouldn't you tell me that from the beginning? It was a secret. Carl said they would both get in trouble if anybody knew. Why would they get into trouble? An affair? I didn't ask, but yeah, it could be. All right. Tell me everything you know about this woman. Carl said she lived somewhere north of town, but that's all I know. Okay. I believe you. That's enough questions for now. Okay. Okay, that must be Carl's locker. Jeez, try not to wreck the place. No reason for alarm. I just needed to get this locker open. I could go and follow up on the saffron lead now, but I should check out the dormitory first.
A few more questions, if I may. Do you know anything about saffron plants? Nope. I know we grow them in Nordson, but that's it. That's enough questions for now. Okay. Gabriel. Yeah? Do you know anything about saffron plants? I know we grow them here in Nordsund, but I'm not sure exactly where. We have vegetables all over. Do you know anything about a woman who is seeing Carl? I'm afraid not. I didn't know Carl myself. Do you know who the woman in this photo is? Too hard to tell. Sorry. Okay, that's all I need for now. Very well, Agent. There was a piece of paper in one of the inner pockets. I could go and follow up on the saffron lead now, but I should check out the dormitory first. Looks pre-collapse, basically a glorified corner lamp. There's a coin slot on the side with a coin stuck in it. I can probably pull it out using some extra strength. Got the coin. It's an old pre-collapse coin. No one would accept it as payment today. The note looks like it was written by a woman. It reads, Hi Doofus, you're registered now. Go try it out. Remember how you totally flipped the day I first came to Nordsund? Kisses. Hey, I'm gonna go check out the dorm. Where's Carl's bed? Turn left and then go straight. I left the light on so it'd be easy for you to find. Gotcha. Be right back. Huh. There are a lot of prints around a panel on the air duct. Dirty laundry. Smells like machine oil. Both beds look recently used. Pens and paper. Nothing out of the ordinary. The panel is screwed on tight. I'll need some way of getting it loose. There was a small key hidden inside the duct. I think I'm almost done here. I should just talk to Gabriel before I go. Clean clothes and sheets, nothing interesting. Hey, I think I'm done here. Oh, okay. Mind sharing your findings? It seems like the murder could be tied to a secret relationship Carl had with a woman, but I'm leaving all options open. Sounds reasonable. Do you have a lead to follow up on? Yes, I have reason to believe that Carl recently passed through an area with saffron plants somewhere in Nordsund. Maybe I can correlate that with Carl's movements to the north of town when seeing that woman. Good. Meanwhile, we'll transport the body to the morgue and have an autopsy performed as soon as possible. Do you want us to keep the area sealed off? No need. I'm done here and won't come back. You can let the men get back to work. Very well. I'll let them know. By the way, how do I get to the police station from here? Just head straight east outside. You'll see it. Got it. See you later.
Hello, deputy. What are you guarding? The residence of the first murder victim. The commissary told me to direct you to his office before going upstairs. I see. I'll go find him and come back later then. Sounds good, Agent. Hey, what's happening here? Bit of an electrical problem with some fallen power lines. It's being taken care of, but it'll be a while. So I can't enter the museum? Well, you can, but only if electrocution is something you enjoy during working hours. What caused it? Did someone mess up, or was there some kind of environmental damage? Oh, well, we've had a windy week. An old tree fell down and ripped down a major power line. It's in a tricky spot, and due to how the grid is built up, I can't cut the power safely without affecting half the town. Sounds like a flawed design. Is that typical for electrical grids these days? Eh, not really. This power grid is quite old, constructed shortly after the collapse. That meant they had to improvise. They couldn't just clone existing power systems at the time, since those were reliant on service robots with <laughs> negligible safety concerns. So yeah, now I'm paying the price. The whole thing is riddled with hacks and workarounds, each one more dangerous than the next. I see. I don't envy such a hazardous work environment. How long will it take you to fix? Hard to say, but it should be done by tomorrow morning. All right, thanks. All right, so this is the town square. That building with the emblem must be the police station. Nice and shiny. I can even see my reflection in it. I'm surprised the Bureau got their thumb out of their ass. It's not like they could find Nordson on a map. I, for one, am grateful for the help. From what I hear, the person they sent is young, but quite capable. Optimistic as always, eh, Kurt? I guess we'll see. Ah, Agent Anglin. We've been expecting you. Councilwoman, I was told you'd be my bureau contact here. That's correct. I'm Stina Ruth, and this here is Kurt Anderson, police commissary. Welcome, Agent. Enjoy your trip to the middle of nowhere? It was a bit bumpy, and way longer than I expected. Yeah, the train has seen better days. You'll find your luggage in your quarters, just through the door behind me. Thanks. I'll check it out later. So, you were probably confused as hell when we sent you straight to a crime scene, right? Kind of. I thought I was supposed to investigate a murder from last week. You were. But unfortunately, a second killing required your urgent attention. I assume there is some bureau procedures before I brief Agent England about the situation? Yes. Why don't you head to your office, and I'll send this youngling on her merry way when we're done. Very well. It was a pleasure to meet you, Agent. Likewise. I'm a bit confused here. Who do I report to? Only to me, as overseer of this district. The local police are at your disposal, since they're legally required to aid you in the investigation. Got it. How would you like me to share my findings with you? Face to face, in the evenings. The balcony inside the local canteen is a good place to meet. Okay. I think I have what I need, then. I'll go talk to the commissary. Good. We'll catch up later. Oh, but I have to ask. Tell me, how was it for you? What do you mean? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. We've both done it. Oh, you mean my... You mean the augmentation, the nanofluid injection. Sticking to the boring scientific terms, are we? Back in my time, we used to just call it taking the blue. Come on, let this old lady live a little. Tell me, how was your first kiss with the blue? A sense of enlightenment and acute awareness washed over me. A crystal clear lucidity I had never felt before. <laughs> I remember that moment like it was yesterday. What I wouldn't give to feel like that again. No side effects, I hope. We wouldn't want you to get compromised in dangerous situations. Not yet, but I know what to look out for. Mild hallucinations, nightmares, 
burning sensations in the limbs, the occasional migraine, things like that. Yeah, that covers the usual suspects. All right, I think you're good to go then. We shouldn't keep the commissary waiting. Would you like me to brief you about the first murder? Yes, please. Maya Strand, 41 years old, the caretaker of the Nordson Museum. She was found by the janitor on the floor near the exhibits early last Wednesday. Just like Carl, she was stabbed. No witnesses, no evidence. Killer practically a ghost. No signs of a forced entry. So either the entrance was open or she let him in herself. What about her residence? Anything out of the ordinary in there? Nothing, as far as we could tell. But we left the places we found it, if you want to have a look. She lived upstairs from the museum. Noted. The crime scene is no longer intact, though, correct? Afraid so. The museum is important to Nordson, so we had the place cleaned out pretty quickly. Exactly what kind of power does Town Hall have over the Nordson police? Well, there's the elected mayor, Marianne Holst, and the town council with five members. Technically, they can't interfere with our work, but they do allocate resources to the police department. So I try to appease them where I can. So they can't fire you if they disagree with your methods? No, I'm independently elected. But they certainly have ways of making my life a living hell if they really want to. Got it. Thanks for the info. One more thing. I'd like to see Maya's body, if that's possible. Of course. We brought it out of the freezer this morning. You'll find it in the morgue, over at the clinic. Dr. Pearson, our physician, is awaiting your arrival. Good. I'll head there when we're done. I'm looking for a young woman connected to the second victim, Carl. All right. What do you know about her? All I have is a picture of her that I found on Carl. But it's damaged, and her face can't be clearly seen. Tricky. If you had any kind of personal information, like an address, you could look her up in our records. They're in the drawers behind me. Noted. I'll get back to you about this if I learn more. Did you know Carl Oscarson? I wouldn't say so. He and my son were playmates as children, but they grew apart in their teens. I haven't talked to Carl myself for many years. Did you know Maya Strand? Not at all. Museums aren't my cup of tea. I prefer to not dwell on the past. Do you know if Saffron has grown anywhere in Nordson? I think so, yes. There should be someone in town with more information. What do you know about the murder in the locker room over at the workshop hall? Not much. As you know, the murder happened shortly before you arrived, so I'm leaving the matter in your capable hands. That's all I needed. Very well. I'm Vera Englund, Special Agent. Oh, I heard about you. I'm Rolf, the Plant Master of Nordson. A Plant Master? What's that? A foreman of sorts. I oversee a team of gardeners who tend to our shared crops. Got it. I have a few questions, if you don't mind. Sure. Go right ahead.
What do you know about the murder of Carl Oscarson? Almost nothing. I just heard half an hour ago. Damn shame. Do you happen to know where saffron is grown in Nordson? Perhaps, perhaps. What would this gentleman have to gain from that piece of information? This behavior suggests that you are a hustler, one with scruples and low supply. Cooperating would make sure your business is left alone. Ah, uh, read you loud and clear, officer. It's agent, or special agent, not officer. That's a police rank. <sighs> Whatever you say, agent. Now, uh, two places come to mind. The greenhouses to the south, and a few crops near Mimir Road. Mimir Road? Where's that? North of the town square. Look for two large farming robots standing around. All right, got it. What do you know about the murder in the museum? Nothing but the talk of the town. That Maya Strand was stabbed by some maniac. Did you know Carl Oskerson? Not really. But like many other people, we had some contact in our work. Okay. What was your impression of him? Nice guy. Too nice. I'd even go so far as to call him gullible. Wouldn't be surprised if that's what got him killed. Not so. You think he trusted the wrong person? I'm just thinking out loud here, but yeah, it wouldn't be a shocker. Did you know Maya Strand? A bit. She approached me a few months back about refining edible plants into a nutrient paste. I helped her plant some quality fungi for it in exchange for a cut of the harvest. And she got herself killed, so I guess all of that was a waste of time. That's a morbid way of looking at it. I guess so. I'm sorry about what happened to her, but I still gotta eat. What's your opinion on Gabriel? The cop? Can't say I enjoy his company. Last time we met, he gave me a couple of nasty bruises. Resisting arrest? That'd certainly be how he'd justify it. I'm trying to find a woman that Carl Oskarson was involved with. Know anything about that? No, I don't stay updated on gossip like that. Do you know who these people are? Damn, that's bloody. Looks like Carl Oskarson, but I couldn't say who the woman is. Okay, that's all I need. Alrighty. See you around. Hi there. Hello. Thought I'd introduce myself, since I'll be coming here a lot. I'm Agent England, Central Bureau. Oh, nice to meet you. It's a relief to have you here. We're all shook by these recent killings. Sure, the doctor's excited, but even his morbid curiosity has limits, you know. After all, we mostly treat coughs and the occasional broken limb here. I get it. I'll do my best to help. Oh, by the way, I'm supposed to go to the morgue. Where's that? Down the stairs on your left. Great, thanks. Don't worry, Maya. You'll be put to rest soon. I know, I know. Sorry about the delay. I was needed urgently out of town. Oh, hello there. Me and this old gal have been expecting you. <laughs> Talkative, is she? Oh, no doubt. The dead have a lot to say, you know. Sometimes more so than the living. Is that so? The living are fickle and prone to deceit. Once dead, 
We can't hide things anymore. Not from me, at least. That's why we need ways to tell what someone is hiding. I suppose. Psychology isn't really my field of expertise. That's fine. You can leave that part to me. Now, I'd like to ask some questions. Sure. Go right ahead. Any theories on Carl's murder? Not yet. I'll need to see the body first. What are your conclusions about Maya's murder? Most obvious first. The cause of death is acute blood loss due to the multiple stab wounds to the chest and stomach, two of which were lethal. The murder weapon is a mid-sized blade, likely a knife of some kind. There are some defense wounds on her arms, so the victim likely tried to shield herself against her assailant. I couldn't recover any biological traces of the murderer. There's no blood on her that isn't hers, or any traces of skin under her nails. This makes me suspect that the killer likely wore protective clothing and gloves. The time of death was roughly 2,300 hours last Tuesday, five days ago today. Did you know Maya Strand? Not really, but I enjoyed listening to the occasional lecture of hers at the museum. She had quite an intellect, that woman. So she wasn't a patient of yours? Oh, she was, but that's all confidential, so I can't say much about it. I understand, but anything you can share would help. Hmm, well, during the autopsy, I noticed that she was unusually worn and feeble for her age. Okay, and what does that tell us? For one thing, that she would have needed help with the more physically demanding tasks of the museum. Got it. Thanks. Did you know Carl Oscarson? No. When I heard he was murdered, I didn't even recognize his name. I had to check my records to realize that I've treated him. To be fair, I've had many patients. But he must have been cursed with one of those awfully forgettable faces. All right. Anything out of the ordinary in his medical history? Sorry. Can't go into detail. Doctor-patient confidentiality, you know? Keep it vague, then. Well, okay. Let me put it this way. I doubt you'd learn much from his file. Noted. Thanks. I'm looking for a young woman connected to the second victim, Carl. I can't help with that. I didn't know Carl on a personal level. That's enough questions for now. Okie dokie. Oh, one last thing. I've been told that the second body is on its way here. If you come back later today, I should be able to tell you something about it. All right, I'll keep that in mind. Multiple stab wounds, sizes approximately the same as the other body. I'd say the MO looks similar to the other murder. I had some more things to ask. Shoot. That's enough questions for now. Okie dokie. This might be useful.
a need, a guilty pleasure, something frightening. Excuse me? Humor me. I need some inspiration for my poem. Oh, I get it. What was it again? A need, a guilty pleasure, something frightening. Trust, eavesdropping, loneliness. Thank you. So, you have a poem for me now? I'll need some time. Come find me later. Nice, soothing sounds. Howdy, Pilgrim, and welcome to Valter's Bot Emporium. Novelty bionics, pet androids, robotic companions, we've got them all. Hi there. I'm Special Agent Vera Anglin. Ooh, here to solve the murders, right? Uh... What? Did Pop spill some oil when he lubed my joints this morning? I told you to keep my chassis clean in case of chicks. <sighs> For crying out loud, Nissa, just let the police lady ask her questions. Oh, great. A ventriloquist act. Oh, no, she's on to us. Fine, you caught me. The man with the blue hat is just a puppet that I'm cunningly controlling with a set of strings. That's a gosh darn lie. I'm fully steam powered. This is inappropriate behavior, citizen. I have some questions about the recent murders. Sure thing, officer. Just keep in mind that all of these are just harmless automatons. There's no real CPUs or nothing around here. I'm not here to report illicit technology. I'm just interested in the killings. All right, then shoot. Uh, I mean, ask away. Did you know Carl Oskarson? Yeah, friendly guy. Came here buying spare parts every now and then. Spare parts? Like what? All sorts. Filters, tubes, nuts and bolts, various electrical gizmos. Hmm. Any idea of what the parts were for? Couldn't say, but I'm pretty sure whatever it was, it had fluid in it. Maybe a water filtering system, a pump, something like that. All those parts laying around, but do I ever get a working left arm, Pops? No, you'd rather let some carpenter assemble a goddamn aquarium. I could replace Mr. Limpy with a water gun if you prefer. Man, soon you'll even let the kids paint a clown face on me again. With a water gun for an arm, at least you could spray yourself clean afterwards. Did you know Maya Strand? Yep, I work with her from time to time. Some of my handiwork can be seen in her exhibitions. Ah, they got some robots in there. Yeah, I assembled them from parts I found in the junkyard. Or the bot cemetery, as I like to call it. Sometimes I feel more like an archaeologist than a mechanic. Got it. So do you have any idea who killed Maya? Ooh, I got a theory. No, Nissa, it wasn't the big war robot in the main exhibition. Why not? That thing is huge. It could easily rip people to pieces, or buildings for that matter. I know because I built it, Nissa. It's totally harmless. I don't buy it, Pops. It's got red eyes. That's a telltale sign of a bot turned evil. <sighs> what I wanted to say was that Maya could be a little odd, but I have no reason to believe anyone would want to kill her. Pops calling others odd. Now that's a joke that requires no punchline. Walter, try to focus on the subject matter, please. Do you recognize this young couple? Just the man, Carl Oskarson. Can't see who his lady friend is. I'm off. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye, police lady.
All right, this is Mamir Road. Carl came through here recently. I'd say those are saffron crocuses. Not sure what those are. Doesn't look like tomatoes, at least. The boot prints lead up the set of stairs. I should head up and have a look. Oh, this floor sure looks squeaky clean. It better. We spent all yesterday mopping it. We wiped all the doors, too. Oh, just my luck. Well, are you fond of filth or something? No, but filth contains valuable information for a detective. Oh, I understand. Uh, let me know if I can be of service. Excuse me. Yeah? I'm Special Agent England, here to investigate the recent murders. I need to ask you a few questions. Okay, I'm Sven, the caretaker of this apartment block here. What can I help you with? Do you know anything about the recent murder of a man named Carl? Nope. As far as I know, no Carl lives here. What about frequent visitors? Yeah, maybe. Haven't heard the name Carl, but then again, I don't socialize with the tenants. It might recognize the man if I saw him. Do you recognize this young couple? Oh, right, that fella. You know him? Yeah, I remember him. It, most people just ignore me, but he always says hi. Nice guy. How often would you say he was here? At least on a weekly basis, but I work in many other buildings too, so it's hard to say. Got it. What can you tell me about him? Just this one thing. He came up to me and asked about the electricity in apartment 113. He wondered if it was possible to get more power. Odd. Did he say what for? No. I told him to take it up with the residential office. There are strict quotas. He said he would bring it up with the tenant, a friend of his. Okay. Do you know anything about the tenant? Nope. Discreet, whoever it is. No idea who lives there. Understood. Where can I find apartment 113 exactly? It's on this floor, just around the corner. All right, thanks. Do you know anything about the murder at the museum? Nothing but common knowledge. I haven't been in that part of town for a while. A shame what happened to Maya, though. She always seemed like a harmless lady to me. Can't imagine who'd want to kill her. Do you know a certain Carl Oscarson? Nope, doesn't ring a bell. Thanks. You can get back to work. Alrighty. Nothing. Guess no one's home. Locked. Some kind of code lock. Looks disconnected. Hey, Sven? Yeah? I need to get inside apartment 113. Can you help? Sure, you can borrow this master key. Don't leave with it though, I'll need it later. Okay, thanks. Thanks. You can get back to work. Alrighty. Huh. Hi, Doofus. You're registered now. Go try it out. Remember how you totally flipped the day I first came to Nordsend? Kisses.
Here's your key back. Thanks for lending it to me. You're welcome. Happy to help. More runes. Seems to be a common thing in Nordsund. Hello again, Gabriel. Hey there. I should let you know Carl's body has arrived, and our coroner is waiting for you in the morgue. Noted. I'll go and have a look shortly. Until then, is there anything I can help you with? What do you know about the murder in the museum? I was first at the scene. Poor woman. Looked like she had regained consciousness after some time and tried to crawl to the door. Sounds horrific. I don't envy her. Did you know Maya Strand? Not really. I knew of her, sure. Most people in Nordson do, because of her importance to the museum. I hardly ever even saw her around, though. From what I hear, she was a bit of a recluse. I'm trying to find the tenant of apartment 113 in Amir Road. Can you help? There are address records in the commissary's office. I'd suggest that you look there. Okay, thanks. I've got a locked door that I need to get through. Is there a locksmith around? We have a guy for that sort of thing, but I think he's out of town. All right, that's too bad. All right, I'm off. Good luck out there. There's the bottle of molding resin here. Might be useful. The drawer is labeled address records. These should come in handy. I'll be able to match a name to an address, or vice versa. Let's have a look. Katarina Berg, born February 2nd, 56 AR. Immigrated to Nordson on May 13th, 80 AR, which means she's been in Nordson for two years. I copied the information onto a loose page from my notebook. I had some more things to ask. Shoot. Do you know who Katarina Berg is? I don't recognize that name. Nope. What are your conclusions about Carl's murder? Just like the previous case, the cause of death is blood loss due to sharp forced trauma to the upper body. The murder weapon looks similar to the one used on the previous victim. The victim has a bruised chest, likely from the impact of a hard fall to the floor. And this makes me believe that Carl was attacked from the front and fell to the ground, twisting as he fell. The killer then continued this brutal onslaught from behind to finish the job. Contrary to the previous case, I couldn't find any defense wounds on the victim. The killer would have to be both strong and fast to overpower Carl like that before he could react and call for help. 
It's certainly not impossible, but I think it's unlikely that a woman could pull that off without considerable training. This leads me to believe that the person we are looking for is likely an adult male in good physical shape. The time of death was sometime late last night, around 10 to 12 hours ago. All right, now that you've seen both bodies, do you have a theory? I think it's very likely that a single perpetrator is responsible for both killings. The MO is the same, and the murder weapons share close similarities. Both murders were premeditated. The killer came well prepared with the clear goal of killing each victim. The lack of struggle during the second attack could be an indication that the murderer learned from their mistakes during the first assault. OK, thanks for your input. Think nothing of it. Happy to help. What are your conclusions about Maya's murder? Most obvious first. The cause of death is acute blood loss due to the multiple stab wounds to the chest and stomach, two of which were lethal. The murder weapon is a mid-sized blade, likely a knife of some kind. There are some defense wounds on her arms, so the victim likely tried to shield herself against her assailant. Hmm, what else? Yeah, I couldn't recover any biological traces of the murderer. There's no blood on her that isn't hers, or any traces of skin under her nails. This makes me suspect that the killer likely wore protective clothing and gloves. The time of death was roughly 2,300 hours last Tuesday, five days ago today. That's enough questions for now. Okie dokie. Hi, Doofus. You're registered now. Go try it out. Remember how you totally flipped the day I first came to Nordsund? Kisses. Katarina Berg, born February 2nd, 56 AR. Immigrated to Nordsund on May 13th, 80 AR, which means she's been in Nordsund for two years. How on earth did they manage to assemble all of this undetected? This is highly illegal. I'll have to report it as soon as I finish the murder investigation. Big enough for two people. Recently used. Looks like something is missing here. Odd looking thing. No idea what it's for. Some kind of live output of technical information. I can't make sense of it. Oh, just my luck. Like getting in here wasn't hard enough. I need more to go on before I can try guessing the password. There's a valve on this pipe here, labeled O2. Not sure what to do with it. Some kind of large tank. Looks like it opens. I wonder what's inside. There's a letter here. Hey, Kata. Or should I use your new alias? It's pretty ironic, since you're the least prudent person I know. JK. Anyhow, I'm sitting here alone, and it all feels so surreal. 
It's hard to believe that it won't be long now before we can let her out. She's ours, but not really. She truly belongs to the world. Bigger than the both of us, greater than the sum of our parts. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you saying, enough with the melancholy, Carl. We're so close now, we should be ecstatic. Anyway, I'm leaving this letter because I'm going away for a couple of weeks. My father passed away. I just got word and, well, I need to deal with things in the village. I'll be okay. We'll talk as soon as I get back. Love, Carl. Hmm. The letter is dated about a month ago. Sounds like a class is in progress. But what happens if you do it anyway? Then policemen or women will come and arrest you. Whoa, harsh. It's the law. We mustn't make things that can think for themselves. But my parents created me and I can think for myself. Did they break the law? <laughs> you make a good point, Alicia, but that's quite different. Different how? I don't get why it's more dangerous to create a thinking machine than a thinking person. You think too much, Ali. No, that's good. You should always ask questions like these. Hey, quick question. Is it safe to go to the apartment upstairs? Well, sure. That area is unaffected by the damage. All right, good. Thanks. All right, Maya's place. Let's see if I can find any clues in here. dense cluster of prints on the corner of this panel here. A hidden safe. Locked, unfortunately, but there's a keyhole. It's a fit. Huh. Since this key was hidden by Carl, it looks like we have a clear connection between the two victims. Let's have a look. A few bags of rare seeds, a bar of platinum, some coins, and a book. The book looks important. I'll take it. Maya must have hidden it here for a good reason. The title is The Conduit Codex. Now, wait a minute, this can't be THE Conduit, can it? Those crazy zealots trying to resurrect AI? I think this case just got a lot more complicated. 
There was a written piece of paper used as a bookmark. I put it aside. Let's have a look in the book. This was used as a bookmark in the book I found in Maya's safe. It reads, Consul PW, Think New Katerina. This was used as a bookmark in the book I found in Maya's safe. It reads, Consul PW, Think New Katerina. Something floating in there. My God. A live baby in a womb tank. What on earth are these people doing? I'm not sure how I feel about this. What the? It's not too late. There'd be sacrifices, but it'd be worth it. <gasps> that was unsettling. They did warn me about the side effects. I hope that was just a brief glitch in my blue. I need to go and report these findings to Stina. But I should probably make sure the tank is stable first. I don't like that blinking red light over there. Stuck. All right, it's loose now. It won't turn any further. The heart rate looks good now. I'll keep the valve in this position. All right, seems stable. I should get going. Agent England, reporting in. Oh, there you are. 
How was your first day? Well, it turns out that the second victim, Carl, was up to something. And whatever they were doing, I'm sure it's somehow connected to the killings. Well, you got yourself one juicy case here. Those two lovebirds of yours just turned a double homicide into an anti-terrorism effort. Shit, you're right. Do we need to call for backup? Nah, you can always call in the local cops if anything big goes down. I suppose. So how active is the conduit these days anyway? From what I was taught at the Academy, they're practically a non-threat now. Sure, we caught some of their head honchos, blew up a few strongholds, but it's hard to wipe out an ideology. All it takes is for a single book to remain in circulation, an idea to spring to life. And we're all back to square one. Yes, this kind of thinking is incredibly dangerous. Have we learned nothing from our history? Amen. Those terrorists will be the end of us all, unless people like us stand in their way. Sure. I found a functional womb tank in the apartment at Mamir Road. It had a living unborn child inside. Oh. Artificial wombs are highly illegal. I'll have to notify our superiors. There's more, Councilwoman. The tank fluid had traces of blue. Really? Now, how the hell did they get that? Any concentrated vials? Not that I could see. Be on the lookout. They might have a stash somewhere. I will. I wonder how the child fits into their agenda. Good question, ain't it? Wanna hazard a guess? It's gotta be some kind of experiment, right? Bingo. These people are fanatics. That's what they do. Hmm. So, what will happen to the child, then? That's not for you to worry about. I'll get word to the city, and they'll send someone within a week or so. Meanwhile, I'll have the apartment put under surveillance. I'll get someone discreet, in case the Lady of the Hour returns. Understood. So, what are your thoughts on the killer? If we are indeed dealing with the conduit, perhaps they had internal disagreements. Turned bloody. Could be. Either way, finding this gal who was hot and heavy with Carl should be your next task. Agreed. I'll do my best to track her down tomorrow. Good. Dismissed, Agent. Pretty girl. Time to wake up. Huh? Who's that? It's me, silly. Who else? Were you expecting other men in your bedroom? Oh, Alex. I had the strangest dream. I was on a murder case far away. In Nordsund, of all places. Ooh, exciting. Was I there too? <sighs> no. You were gone. I didn't care much for that part. Well... I'm here now. I thought I'd check on how you're doing. Oh, you know me. Always trying to figure things out. Huh. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. Sorry for waking you. I just needed to hear your voice. That's all right. I'm gonna go back to sleep now. Good night, Alex. Good night, Vera. I thought dreaming of Alex was a thing of the past. Might as well get rid of some of that clutter from yesterday. No point in carrying all that junk around. Ugh, oh, my head. Something is happening. Whoa, my eyes feel great. Everything looks so sharp and clear. Agent England. Good. You're up. Morning, gentlemen. We were just going to see if you're awake. There's been a freak accident of sorts. It's probably best for you to see for yourself. The timing is quite suspicious, given the recent murders. All right. 
Who is the victim? Leonard Dahl, the head of our new recycling center. He was killed sometime during the night. In a most gruesome manner, too. Gabriel will accompany you to the site. Very well. Let's be on our way, then. Oh, but before you go, Agent, did you cut up one of the murder victims? Dr. Pearson is quite upset with you. It was necessary. Dr. Pearson should prioritize the well-being of future murder victims over previous ones. All right, then, but please keep that sort of behavior to a minimum. Your jurisdiction doesn't mean you can do whatever you please. I'll show restraint in the future, Commissary. Let's go, Gabriel. Here we are. Have a look around. The man standing over there is our witness. Got it. I'll let you know if I need any help. Understood. I'll be here. This says the machine works by grinding down organics into smaller chunks, and then burning them to create biogas. The control panel here can be used to retract the grinding gears and access the chamber, but the system waits for the latest batch to be incinerated first. I shouldn't mess around with that before I've talked to the witness. Thank God you're here. Len... Len... Slow down. Relax. You're safe. We're here to help. Start at the beginning. <sighs> okay. The big organics processor. I woke up late last night, heard it fire up. I live next door, so I got dressed and walked in... here. Leonard wasn't around. So I turned all the machines off. I went to look for him in his living quarters, but he wasn't there. I figured he was still out late with some of the guys and that the machines had sprung to life on their own somehow. I went back to bed and slept through the night. Didn't hear anything else. When I came back this morning to work just half an hour ago, Leonard was still gone. He's usually up and about way before my shift starts. I did a routine check of the organics processor and... And that's when I noticed his remains in there. The victim is inside that machine? Yes. Could it have been an accident? I don't know. God, I, I can't get it out of my head. Please, try to calm down. Could it have been an accident? It could. Uh, maybe he fell down in the pipe uh, and, uh, and uh, was torn to sh Reds! Oh, God, poor Leonard! It's no use. He's having a panic attack. Mortem. This clearly wasn't an accident then. It was a disposal of a murder victim. I should try to get access to the remains behind the grinder. That part of the machinery is too dark to see. That looks like the ignition mechanism. I can see the yellow cable powering it. Looks like the human remains are trapped behind the grinding gears. I don't think they can be moved manually. Okay. The yellow cable is disconnected now. I think that retracted the grinding gears. There was a small key among the remains. It must have been in the victim's pocket. Ugh, this is quite a mess. I'm not equipped to deal with this. 
I'll have to ask Dr. Pearson to come here and gather the body parts. Hey, Gabriel. Yeah? I've managed to secure the body. You're free to leave and get back to your other duties. The remains are in quite bad shape, so I think it's best if Dr. Pearson collects them. Roger that, ma'am. I think the doctor has some medical emergency this morning, but he should be able to take care of it today or tomorrow. Good. Tell him to bring it all to the morgue. Will do. I'll go find him right away. C can I leave too? I really need to go get a drink. I suppose. I'll call for you if I come up with any more questions. This thing is used to transport metals to the smelter. It's filled with various junk. All right, looks like these are the materials last put into the smelter. Wow. I think I just found the weapon that killed Carl and Maya. Hmm. No DNA or prints. So this knife must have been thoroughly cleaned. Got the knife. The weapon that killed Carl and Maya, likely Leonard too. This is probably where Leonard handled all of the paperwork. Leonard sped, nothing out of the ordinary. Mostly history books and some fictional novels. Hi, honey. No. Wait, what? It wasn't a dream? I must be going crazy. The blue is messing with my head. Uh, that's one way to say hello. You doing okay there, darling? Not really, Alex. How can I help them? This is weird for me, too. I have no idea. It's so strange seeing you like this. Well, I'm here now. Maybe we should just... Try to make the best of it. I guess so. Great. So, uh, how are you doing? Really? Oh, you know, keeping it together somehow. I thought taking on this case would give me a chance to get away from everything. I get that. We went through a lot. Yeah, you can say that again. Well, I'll let you get back to the case. Let's talk later, all right? Okay. I must be losing my mind. Hey there. Hi. Whoa, badass coat. Oh, thanks. Got it a week ago. Right on. You need to get some patches and stickers and shit for it too. Give it some personality. I might just do that. So, you're some kind of artist. Yeah? What do you think? It's gotta be ball lightning, right? Huh. <laughs> That's an interesting take. There, Walter. Morning, miss. How was your first night in town? Yeah, have a nice night's sleep? Well, I sure didn't. This numb nut forgot to unplug me, 
so I had to listen to his snoring for nine hours. I protest, Nyssa. I hardly ever sleep for more than seven. Oh, well, that makes it much less like torture. <laughs> I slept okay. The bed was a bit too soft for my taste, but I'll live. Glad to hear it. So, what can I do for you today? I guess you heard what happened in the recycling center. Yeah, I don't know much about it, but man, people dropping dead left and right like this? It's getting real scary out there. Do you know who Katarina Berg is? She might also go by the name Melinda. Melinda sounds familiar, but I can't really place her. Sorry. I'm terrible with names, though. More of a visual thinker. Did you know Leonard Dahl? A little. He came by every now and then, buying things for the recycling center. We've been talking about automating some of the work there. Yeah? Anything out of the ordinary about him? I wouldn't say so. He was a quiet, nice guy. A real shame what happened to him. What do you think of the conduit? Lunatics. Plain and simple. I'm surprised to hear you say that, given what you do for a living. Sure, I may seem like the kind of guy who would meddle with AI, but you have to remember that these are just puppets and dolls. That's true. I'm not really a robot. We just pretend I am. That's right, my lad. My family was almost wiped out in the collapse. I wouldn't betray their memory by supporting those nutjobs. I'm off. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye, police lady. I think that leads to a church of some kind. No reason to go up there at the moment. Maybe later. I don't feel an urge for a coffee break right now. Not sure what happened here, but it looks like old damage. Somebody swept up the glass on the outside, but didn't bother with actually repairing the windows. The junk piles extend some half a mile into the empty eastern part of town. I doubt they're being added to, though. Nordson residents seem conscientious about recycling. A light beacon, marking the northern edge of the town disk. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. I don't have a reason to visit the junk heap right now. I don't have any business in the school. Hello again, Gabriel. Hey there. Can I be of assistance? What do you know about the conduit? It's some fringe religious group, isn't it? Yeah. Terrorist classified. Right. Are they tied to the case? Sort of, but I'm still trying to figure out the details. Understood. I'll let you know if I come across anything related to them. So, it looks like Leonard's accident was a murder after all. 
Seems so, yeah. We have to catch this psycho before he strikes again. Agreed. Do you know who Katarina Berg is? She may also go by the name Melinda. I don't know about Katarina, but Melinda? That's the name of the school teacher, I think. At least that's what I heard the kids call her outside. Are you absolutely sure? Positive. As far as I know, she's the only Melinda in Nordsend. That's excellent news. If you see her, take her into custody immediately, and let your colleagues know to be on the lookout, too. Yes, ma'am. What do you know about Melinda, the school teacher? Not a lot. I've seen her around with the children, but that's about it. What do you know about Leonard Dahl? Nothing really. I never got to talk to him much. All right, I'm off. Good luck out there. Pictures of teachers and staff decorate the wall. Some are from way back when the school was founded. No names anywhere, though. There are a number of women here who could be Katarina, but it's hard to be sure without something specific to go on. Okay, let's see if I can find any similarities between any of these women and the picture I have. Oh, right here. Same brass necklace. This has got to be her. All right, I took the picture. Perhaps someone will recognize her. A photo of Katarina, dated a few months back. Again. Hey there. What can I do you for? Do you know where I can find the school teacher, Melinda? I'm not sure who that is. What does she look like? Here, I found a good photo. Oh, her. I sometimes spot her off the beaten path, actually. You do? Where? By the junk heap. Don't know what business she's got there, but I notice her sometimes when I collect parts. She thinks nobody sees her, all sneaky and quick. But I've got keen eyes. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Walter. I'm off. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye, police lady. Looks like he's holding some kind of map. Hey, you wanna go do something? I'm tired, let's just hang out. You wouldn't be tired. Hey kids. Uh, hey. Theo, that's the lady that Miss M. Shut up, Alicia. Now wait a minute. Alicia, is it? You know Miss M? I, uh. Of course we do, ma'am. We're kids, she's our teacher. Yeah. We just know her from school and stuff. Right, so you haven't seen Miss M around today, have you? Uh-uh, nope. Hmm, well, I have a few questions for you. So Katarina is your teacher, right? Nuh-uh, our teacher's name is Melinda, but she prefers Miss M. You know, I need to find Miss M really badly. Do you know where she would go if she was ever in trouble? I don't know. We have no idea, ma'am. I think you know more. 
Now would be the time to tell me before you get into trouble. There's nothing to say, lady. But Theo... Alicia, chill. We haven't done anything wrong. I guess. Do you know who Stina Ruth is? Yeah. She works with my mom, the mayor. Stina is pretty cool. I like how she doesn't treat me like a kid. I see. How does your mom like working with Stina? I know they fight sometimes, but mom says that's why she likes having Stina around. She doesn't like people who always agree. Sounds like a good quality in a leader. I guess. Do you know what happened yesterday to a man named Carl? My friend told me that somebody murdered him with a knife. I bet it was totally gross. I bet you wouldn't say that if you saw it for real, Theo. You'd just be sad. Not all. Yeah, huh? Just like when we found that dead bird. Shut up! It was different. Do you know Leonard Thal? Who? He was... Never mind. It doesn't matter. So, did you guys ever hang out with Maya Strand? Hang out? No way. She didn't really like kids. She liked me, sorta. But this one time, she got real angry with Alicia. Oh yeah? Why? I just wanted to try all her stupid stuff. Alicia was like, running around and pressing all the buttons. And Maya totally freaked out. That sucked. I was just messing around and she started yelling at me. Yeah, Maya used to be fun. When we were little, she'd talk about history and stuff. Now she only talks to herself, like a crazy lady. Not anymore. She's dead, Allie. Okay, whatever. Sorry, I guess. Do you know what happened in the museum last week? Miss M told us in school. She almost cried. I could see tears in her eyes. My mom was totally freaked out that day. She had to work late again. Yeah? Why is that? I don't know. I guess she had to talk to the police and stuff. That's all I need, kids. Okay, bye. See ya. Hmm, let's see here. It's a map of a secret hideout of some kind. Looks like the entrance is hidden behind a fridge in the east junk pile, just past the tunnel. Cute outfit. Must have taken forever to knit. There's some kind of switch under here. There we go. Can't get too close. That's really high voltage. I need to find someone who knows their way around electronics. That power cord seems to be connected to the metal gate. It doesn't look like it can be easily removed. I can see a small sign near the end of the cable. It says 230 volts to 240 volts. I'll write it down. It's a hefty pneumatic arm used to push that refrigerator open. There's a sticker on the transformer it's connected to saying 215 volts to 240 volts. I'll write it down. Allie? Feeling rested yet? Mm, not really. Hey there, what can I do you for? 
Hey, do you know your way around electronics? No way! He just happened to accidentally construct a store filled with robots. Let me guess, you flunked deduction 101? <clears throat> Don't mind him. Yes, I do know a thing or two about that. Well, great. I need you to come with me to disconnect the power to a thing. A trap. Oh, uh, I'd love to help, but I can't leave the store like this. Got an important customer today. Why don't you check with Lisa over by the museum? She can probably help you out. The woman who was fixing that broken power pole? Yeah, that's her. All right, thanks. I'm off. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye, police lady. There's that red light again. Something must be wrong. Oh, the tank is nearly out of nutrients. I should keep an eye out for a replacement canister. There's an electrified fence in the junk heap. I'd like to disconnect it. Oh, you should be able to do that from the power station just outside the entrance. Here, you can borrow this key to open the door. Great, thanks. They're live. I should turn off the power first. Ah, good. It still displays the expected voltage. When I have the voltage I want, I should be able to simply turn the main breaker back on, and that voltage will be fed to the grid. That's it. I should go check out the gate. J. 
Don't move. Oh. Wait, you're that city cop. Fuck, I was expecting... Ugh. Today is not your day, sister. You're desperate. Is it because of the baby? I can help. Help me. How exactly? Our highly illegal womb tank is the only thing keeping her alive. And you're from the Bureau. We both know what you're gonna have to do. Look, I have no desire to hurt your child. If you help me find the killer, I'll overlook what's in your apartment. You're just stalling. The killer is still out there and I... I have to stop him from hurting my... our... I know how you feel. You don't have to do this alone, Katerina. We both want to catch Carl's killer. You're just telling me what you think I want to hear. But I must say, I admire your ability to stay collected in the face of death. Either that, or I don't consider you as large of a threat as you may think. Are you suicidal or just failing at some kind of bizarre reverse psychology? You must think I'm dumb. As soon as I take my guard down, you'll shoot me without batting an eye. I won't. Your little family has suffered enough. If it makes you feel safer, you can keep your gun, okay? You better believe I'm keeping my gun. Okay, that's fine. We don't have to go to the station. Let's just sit down and talk about this. I must be the most stupid, naive woman in the world. You won't regret this, Katerina. So, you believe that the killer is after you now? I know he is. He got Maya and Carl. I'm next, obviously. Let's not forget Leonard Dahl. He was butchered this morning. Leonard? The, the recycling guy? Oh, Jesus, I had no idea. That, that's odd. Odd how? Because, actually, I have to give you the whole story for it to make sense. Carl and I wanted a child, but I, I can't. I have viable eggs, but there are other complications. I can relate. Me and my partner. Well, something similar happened to us. Then you can grasp our situation better than anyone. So anyway, we came into contact with a woman called Maya Strand who claimed that she could help us have a baby. She'd built a replica of an old womb tank. Forbidden technology, of course. I see. And what did she want in return? Our help with some of her other shady experiments. The lady was somewhat frail. She couldn't handle much heavy labor. She eventually revealed that she was a self-proclaimed member of the Conduit. Probably figured we had too much to lose to turn her in. She was right. Yes, I found the Conduit connection. Playing with fire. Yeah, so Carl and I decided to play along until after the birth and then escape Nordsend as a family. So you merely pretended to sympathize with Conduit beliefs, and then Maya was murdered. Yes, Epos did it, I'm sure. Those assholes must have found out. Epos. That rings a bell. Earth Preservation Orthodox Society. Anti-tech group. You must have heard of them over at the Bureau. Used to be terrorist classified. Oh yeah, I remember. So they have a church here in Nordsund? Yep, near the old mall in Northtown. Big place. They get visitors from all over. Why do you believe Epos is responsible for the murders? Who else? 
there's only one group still violently opposing the conduit, and that is Epos. There's a hole in this murder theory, though. Leonard Dahl. Oh, yeah. No idea how that guy fits into all this. Could be unrelated. Unrelated is improbable, given the historically low murder rate of Nordsund. I guess. Maybe those dimwitty post assassins thought he was one of us, or he got in their way for some other reason. If all of this is true, why did you take a new name when you came to Nordsund? It's a long story, but I left a life that was pretty ugly. I had to escape an abusive boyfriend. I needed a fresh start here in Nordsund. The nickname thing just happened. It fell natural, and then, well, I guess it stuck. That doesn't explain why your relationship with Carl was kept a secret, though. Carl and I happened really fast. It wasn't so much intentionally kept a secret, it just never became a public thing. When we started collaborating with Maya, we obviously had all the more reason to keep things quiet. Hmm. Well, I'm going to give all of this some thought and report to my superior. I'll be back later if I come up with more questions. Okay, before you go, just... The womb tank. The nutrients must be running low by now. Without replenishment, she could be hurt, even die. You're right. I went by the apartment and the nutrient levels were critical. Damn it! Maya was supposed to install a replacement canister when she was attacked. Hmm. Do you know where she'd keep a thing like that? I'm not entirely sure, but my guess would be somewhere near the museum. All right, I'll look into it. You have no idea how much that means to me. Thank you. You're welcome. I need to pick your brain about a few more things. Okay. What's up? Remind me again. Where should I look for a nutrient canister? It should be somewhere in the museum area. So tell me what you know about the conduit. I doubt there are anything to worry about. If there are other members out there, I'd wager they're just as loony as Maya. So Maya was on her own? There was no contact with any other conduit cells? Not as far as I know, but I didn't really care to find out either. What can you tell me about Maya? Oh, she really was the epitome of a mad scientist. Her crazy little experiments had no regard for the law, ethics, or even common sense. Sure, she had moments of clarity, like when she built our womb tank, but most of the time she was just a nutcase. Hmm. What about her conduit beliefs? That was something different. Something more coherent. I think she saw AI as, like, a step on the evolutionary ladder. She used to talk about how the most intelligent beings deserve to rule the Earth. Sounds like she had an elitist streak. You could say that. She didn't think too highly of most people. Do you know Stina Ruth? I know who she is, but we haven't met. All right, I got what I needed for now. Good, talk to you later. I'm gonna head out now. Don't go too far. I won't. And thanks, Farah. You're not like most city cops I've dealt with. You're welcome. Stay alert, the killer is still out there. I'll be careful.
Here's your key back. Thanks. Oh, no problem. Path of the Pilgrim. Hmm. Kind of an odd name for an exhibition about the Collapse. The Collapse occurred on what we now refer to as Year Zero AR, Anno Reducto, Year of the Collapse. During this time, AI was involved intimately in every part of our lives. The typical family could not be sustained without it for more than a few weeks. A coalition of anti-technology, anti-globalist, and religious movements, referred to as the Human Wave, reached a critical mass due to a series of AI incidents across the globe. A growing fear of the singularity, mainly proposed by Voice for Human Progress, VFHP, was a contributing factor, as were proven hardware faults in widespread robotics across the globe. On June 2nd, the third decree UN resolution was passed, declaring that all AI was scheduled to be discontinued over a course of 10 years. An observant reader may notice that this definition is different from the third decree we live by today, wherein CPUs are completely outlawed. This is because the third decree has been amended 12 times. However, the phasing out period for AI did not proceed as planned, and we now enter an era in which there are large holes in our historical records. But we do know that there was a massive worldwide blackout rendering most computer chips and processors in the world unusable. Contemporary scholars have theorized about what exactly caused this sudden change. If it was a deliberate large-scale attack, an unintended consequence of the ongoing shutdowns, or if there could be natural causes, such as solar flares. The evidence is scarce, and the lack of global communication and infrastructure, not to mention the struggle for daily survival, has made truth-seeking in this matter extraordinarily difficult. Regardless, the end result was clear. From that day, the old world was no more. In the dark, we took our first stumbling steps as truly free humans, surrounded by our mountains of dead machines. Due to the third decree, AI today is practically non-existent outside sanctioned laboratory conditions. Fringe terrorist groups such as the Conduit and N Protocol, EP, still try to resurrect AI but have been successfully fought and nearly wiped out by authorities. Critics of the nanosubstance Blue claim that despite it lacking CPUs, it is a form of intelligent neural network warranted to be included in the Third Decree. Defenders of Blue tend to cite the Fourth Amendment, where transhumanism efforts in the form of human augmentation are declared legal. However, the Fourth Amendment was written before the discovery of Blue, when primitive mechanical and cybernetic implants were the only options for human augmentation. The human wave was a loose affiliation of political and religious movements with the supreme goal of eradicating AI. It is widely considered to be the largest single cause of the collapse. Post-collapse, the movement continued its activities to some extent up to 4AR, but gradually lost its ability to maintain any larger operations due to the extensive deglobalization. Over time, the subgroups of the human wave splintered back into their original factions, some having accomplished their goals ceased to exist completely. Others, like the Church of Epos, Earth Preservation Orthodox Society, were formed to find a new place in a post-collapse world. Wow, impressive lab. 
There's got to be a whole bunch of third-degree infractions in this place. Maya must have conducted her secret illegal experiments here. Various technical drawings. Some of them look similar to the womb tank. Equations of some kind. I can't make sense of them. There were a couple of tapes here. Various tools for electronics and mechanical work. Dirty laundry, presumably Maya's. Seems like she made herself comfortable down here. Good. I think this is what I need for the womb tank. Hmm. Feels empty. A few different machines for working with audio. Looks like I can play audio tapes here. In a dream, I was summoned by the Acer. I had been chosen to create a new god. And her name was Holdra. She would be conjured in my mind. And the creed, at long last, would become manifest. I awoke in tears. And this vision has stuck with me ever since. This woman doesn't sound very sane. An AI super intelligence would essentially be indistinguishable from a god. Infinite intelligence leads to infinite knowledge, and by extension, infinite power, illness, suffering. Even death itself could be turned into obsolete concepts. And what is a god, if not one who has reign over life and death? Yep, yeah, those are conduit ideas, all right. Hmm, this computer must require some kind of hardware key. An electronic headset of some kind. Looks turned off. filled up. Red light gone. Must have done the trick. Looks like things are working out okay for you in there. Makes you think, doesn't it? Seeing a baby like this? Yeah. It reminds me of everything that happened... before. Same here. But you know, it's not too late. It is for you, Alex. It is? Well, yeah. You're dead. I am, but... 
You're not. You still have time to make up for what we lost. I don't know. I'd like that, but the wounds are still fresh. I know. I hope you'll find a way to heal soon. Me too. <sighs> Painful memories. I should head back to Stina. Agent Anglin, right on time. Councilwoman? Oh, stop it. That word always makes me feel old. Call me Stina. All right then, Stina. I have some things to report. Always straight to the point. You allergic to small talk, kiddo? Sorry, been a long day. I just want it to be over. Well, suck it up. I need to vent. Had an argument with a friend today. Yeah? What about? Not important, but we ended up going our separate ways. Isn't it funny how quickly things can change? I guess. History, trust, respect. Poof. Gone. Yeah, that's why we need to stay strong. For those moments when you've only got yourself to rely on. Spoken like a true loner. I suppose I can somewhat relate. So, I wanted to share something else. My augmentations grew stronger this morning. The blue is starting to adapt to my psychology. Blossoming before my very eyes, are ya? Do tell. What new things can you do? Oh, you know, this and that. Atta girl. Keep your cards close to your chest, and everyone will underestimate you. So, how was this recent... experience of yours? Quite a ride for a rookie such as yourself, am I right? Kind of, yeah. Maybe you'd like to explain how it works, in depth? Sure. As the lab coats over at the Bureau have shown time and time again, no one really knows how the hell blue works. But that's only on a cellular level, right? We still have some data on the bottom line. Yeah, but I mean, look at it like this. Lady Blue is your best friend. She knows what you want, what you need. A slow but deliberate beast. She grows stronger with time, but there's no lying to her. And there's no hiding from her. If you wish to destroy your enemies, she'll give you strength and speed. If you desire knowledge, she'll expand your mind and sharpen your senses. If you want to connect with others, she'll give you an aura of comfort, honesty, and trust. Simply put, blue is pure liquid power. Now, let's hear your report. I've heard rumors about quite a grisly spectacle in the recycling center. Ebus, huh? Those guys are gonna be a pain to deal with. First, they're well-armed. Second, they got pulled with City Hall. Our beloved mayor recently granted their church embassy status. Wait, what? So they're out of my jurisdiction? Not quite. It's one of those legal limbos. Sure, you can force your way in without breaking any laws, but they also have the right to defend themselves from unsanctioned intruders. That's absurd. In other words, they can gun me down without repercussions. I wouldn't say that. It's kind of a hassle to dispose of your still warm corpse. <sighs> like this case couldn't get any worse. <laughs> no, no. You're an agent. The creme de la creme of the Central Bureau. Time to act like one. Infiltrate and evade, remember? If you do find evidence that these nut jobs are responsible for the killings, we'll get a diplomatic warrant. All right. I have to be discreet then, and try to get inside without arousing suspicion. Bingo. And, well, hope they don't already know who you are. That would make things awkward. Okay, then. I'll get some rest and visit the church in the morning. Good plan, Agent. Dismissed.
You know, the story of Katarina and Carl reminds me so much of what we went through. Yeah. Similar circumstances, but vastly different outcomes. It's fascinating how just a few variables can change everything. Indeed. Are our lives nothing but a sum of interconnected parts? Does any meaning attributed to them simply stem from our limited human cognition? Most likely. The observer bias seems insurmountable. Even the concept of meaning itself is relative. It's scary to think about, that it could all be an illusion. Every relationship we had, everything we ever cared about. It really is. <sighs> this can't be healthy. There's that feeling again. Whoa. Morning, Agent. Dr. Parison asked me to tell you to meet him in the morgue. He's done with the remains from the recycling center. All right, thanks. I'll go have a look before I pay Epos a visit. Hello again, Gabriel. Hey there, can I be of assistance? What do you know about the Free Church of Epos? We have a few members in the family, but I've never been there myself. Always felt uncomfortable in churches. All right, I'm off. Good luck out there. Well, Leonard, it's been quite gross working with you. Oh, if it isn't the fantastic finger snatcher. Do I need to start frisking you for body parts? Uh, that won't be necessary. I'm sorry, Doctor. I suppose I got a bit carried away. Apology accepted. So, I've got a little present for you. Is that so? Yep, right here on this tray. If you're a fan of minced meat, I've got a bucket full of Leonard out back, too. I think I'll pass on that one. Good choice. The seasoning is subpar, to say the least. You take your jokes way too far, Doctor. Now, what have you found? Well, obviously, the poor man was shredded. Fortunately for him, it happened when he was already dead. Yeah, I came to the same conclusion. Can you tell me anything about the cause of death? Not much with the remains in this state. No signs of toxic substances, but that obviously still leaves a lot of options open. Noted. So what's this in front of me? Oh, yes. I noticed a pattern on Leonard's skin. Likely a tattoo. These are all the pieces I could find. I'm not sure how they fit together, but I kept them in case you wanted to have a look. All right, I'll check them out. Looks like Leonard had this symbol tattooed on him. I'll copy it to my notebook. My sketch of Leonard's tattoo. Looks like some kind of symbol. I had some more things to ask. Shoot.
that's enough questions for now. Okie dokie. Rolf looks busy. I'll leave him to his work. Change of venue? Yes, this is where the recital will take place later. Great acoustics. Ah, can I have a little foretaste? Very well. <clears throat> the same wind, my dear, the same wind, shook the walls of Jericho, dried your tears. No lead to be found, no trust, nor joy. This fire you were set to guard, and I to rest by its side. Not a whisper, to be heard. Let it be known. We're here, all alone. That was great. I love the ending. You're too kind. Hi there. Greetings, and welcome to the Free Church of Epos. If you wish, you can enter our public prayer room to the right for some silent contemplation. All right, thanks. What about the rest of the church? The other areas are off limits to non-members. I have official police business, though. Special Agent England. I'm sorry, but I can't let you pass. You're gonna need papers. This is a diplomatic sanctuary. There's no time for that. I'm trying to solve a triple homicide. I'm sorry to hear that, man but I can assure you that there are no murderers here. I'd suggest you take this up with your superior. There's no time to mess around with paperwork. I'll need to take things into my own hands. I need to get out of sight first. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Exodus 23. Suppose it wouldn't be a church without a Bible quote or two. An armed guard. If he notices me, I'm likely in big trouble. Looks like a timeline of how the Epo seals changed over the years. My sketch of Leonard's tattoo. Looks like some kind of symbol. No way. It's the tattoo design. That must mean Leonard is a member of Epos. Or, well, he was, at some point at least. I'll get rid of the sketch, now that I've identified the symbol. An armed guard. If he notices me, I'm likely in big trouble. It says LD on this box right here. That's gotta be Leonard Dahl. Locked, obviously. Got a written piece of paper. Grandmaster Otto, if you are reading this, it means that I have failed. I'm sorry, but I didn't want to involve the church unless absolutely necessary. My brother has some things for you they will be self-explanatory. I told him to only give them up to the person who repeats the famous quote from my favorite book. I'm sure you remember. Blessings from Leonard, your most humble and loyal servant. Seems like Leonard was up to something shady. I'll have to find his brother and figure out what the quote is.
All right, let's see if this works. What the heck? That should keep him busy for a while. Sturdy looking filing cabinet. Sturdy looking filing cabinet. Locked. Damn. Ugh, still won't budge. I'll have to find another way. A ventilation panel. Can't reach it from here. Ugh, it's stuck. <clears throat> All right, it's loose now. Six new members over the last month. The Bacarbo Parish is also doing better now. They managed to resolve their financial difficulties? Oh yes, Elsa is doing great work there. Sending her on our behalf was the right call. That brings us to the subject of these horrid murders. Vile acts for certain. I pray that the church will stay clear of any blame. Why shouldn't it? We had nothing to do with those atrocities. I know that, old friend. But surely our enemies will not ignore an opportunity like this. Oh, I suppose so. Our violent past coming back to haunt us. Sadly, the fact that one of our people was victimized will inevitably draw eyes upon the church. Yes, maybe it's in our best interest to invite the police as a gesture of good faith. It would certainly show them that we have nothing to hide. Very well. Let's bring the subject to a vote at the council tonight. Hmm. At the very least, it seems like the church leadership didn't sanction the murders. I'll wait a bit and see if they leave. Administrative paperwork. I don't think it's safe to go back that way. Wow, that's a lot of books. They have an impressive library here. Welcome, visitor. Oh, uh... Special Agent, Violent Crimes, Central Bureau. Oh, it's you again. The man from the train. Indeed. I never forget a face, but I'm afraid I didn't catch your name. It's Agent England. Ah, I am Vilgut. I assume you are aware of our legal status. Yes, I've been informed. But tell me this. If you had nothing to hide, why would you invoke said legal status? A church needn't have things to hide to be protective of its privacy. But to prove you wrong, I'll answer any questions you might have. All right. I'll take you up on that. Do you know who Leonard Dahl's brother is? I believe his name is Rolf. Quite a shady character, if you ask me. Oh, the gardener, right? Yes, that's him. So Leonard Dahl, one of your members, was killed yesterday. I had a feeling your inquiry would lead us to him. Can you think of anyone who would want him dead? No. He was a loyal member of the church for many years. Kind of a loner, but always helpful and polite. He did have a strangeness to him, though. A look in his eyes like he was stuck in perpetual contemplation. It seemed as if he was constantly on the verge of but never quite able to reach some sort of profound revelation. Hmm. Any hint of a violent side to him? No. 
To my knowledge, Leonard never committed any violence, nor did he express any desire to do so. What can you tell me about Rolf? Not my favorite person. He mocked the Lord when I first met him, but I don't take kindly to that sort of behavior. What's your opinion on Maya Strand? She was my polar opposite in almost every way. But I enjoyed the occasional late-night chess game with her in the canteen. It's fascinating how trivial activities like board games can bring such different people together. It goes without saying that I was as shocked and appalled as anyone when I learned of what happened to her. What's your opinion on Stina Ruth? Cunning woman, that one. And she's been a thorn in our side ever since she joined the town council. Yeah? How so? She has a penchant for political obstruction. Things like hindering our building permits or imposing unreasonable restrictions on our street preaching. Hmm. Why do you think she's been acting that way? If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say she has some kind of grudge. Some Christian out there must have greatly angered her at some point. Do you know who Katarina Berg is, the school teacher? She also calls herself Melinda. I believe I've seen her around town with the school children, but I don't know much about her. What do you know about Carl Oscarson? I must confess I didn't even know his name before I heard he was a murder victim. This church, Epos, what are your teachings? At our core, we are an Orthodox Christian church. We believe in the one true God and his only son, Jesus Christ. And what sets your group apart from other Christians? Two things. The reverence of the essential humanity in each and every one of us, and our stalwart opposition to false idols. Prior to the collapse, the great flood of our time, we arose as a reaction to the disgraceful habits of that era. The widespread worship of anything and everything but God. Wealth, fame, mindless pleasure, the sickening mutilation of our bodies to the point where some were more machine than human, and the worst of all, the pursuit of AI superintelligences, false gods that humans aspire to construct for themselves. We oppose it all for the glory of our creator and the salvation in our future. And how do you go about preventing people from worshiping these false gods? Not by violence, if that's what you're implying. Such things belong to the past. So it's just a coincidence that the only armed man I've seen in Nordson was right behind your doors? Sadly, the world is still in a state where men with guns are unnecessary evil. However, no laws have been broken. We have every right to bear arms. Do you know what kinds of books Leonard liked to read? Hmm. Uh, one book he borrowed frequently was The Kingdom of God is Within You. In fact, it still hasn't been returned. It should be among his estate. Would you be able to say if he had any favorite quotes from that book? No, you should ask someone who spent more time with him. Fine, I'll do that. What kind of book is it anyway? It's about nonviolence, to summarize. Got it. Thanks. What's your take on the conduit? Oh, those heretics? Haven't heard anything of them in many years. As far as I know, they are firmly confined to the ash heap of history by now. Some might argue with that. Your church has a violent past with them, hasn't it? There's no denying that. We fought many battles with their kind in the youth of our movement. And now? Don't be absurd. They are practically eradicated, and we have been a peaceful group for decades. What do you think about their teachings, then? Certainly dangerous doctrines if left unchecked. The Conduit believes humans will create God in their image, instead of the other way around. In their folly, they forget that humans are flawed, and that their creations will inevitably inherit those flaws. The false god they aspire to create may demand sacrifices they're not prepared for. That's all, for now. Understood. I'll be here if you have more inquiries. Oh, the passage led back here. Good. 
Since I left the door unlocked behind me, I'll be able to come back the same way. Ball lightning. My interpretation must have been spot on. There it is, the book from the library. Got it. The Kingdom of God is Within You by Leo Tolstoy. This looks ancient, pre-collapse for sure. A number of pages are marked in the margins, likely to easily find them. Even if one of the marked pages contains the quote I need, there's too much text. I'll need more to go on. Maybe someone who had regular contact with Leonard would know the quote if they saw it. Hey there, how are you holding up? Oh, you again. I'm doing okay. Any luck with the case? Some. Have time for more questions? I suppose. What can you tell me about Leonard's death? I already told you everything I know. Do you know Rolf, the plant master? Sure, he brings our gardening waste to the recycling center every week. He's kind of an asshole, though. Always seems to be trying to rip you off. Do you remember Leonard quoting a book? Hmm. He used to say this phrase every now and then. Not sure if it's from a book, though. Yeah? What was the saying? I don't remember exactly. Something about life and being human. Think. Sorry, might recognize it if I saw it. Have a look at these marked pages. Does anything remind you of things Leonard used to say? Hmm. Give me a minute, will you? Sure. Here. The sole meaning of life is to serve humanity. Leonard used to say that whenever I was late for work. Perfect. Thanks. No problem. What's your opinion on the Free Church of Epos? I don't know much about it, but going to church doesn't sound like the worst idea. Maybe I should go and light a candle for Leonard. I'll let you get back to your drink. Okay, good luck out there. Hi there. Hello, stranger. Newcomer, right? What brings you to town? Is it that obvious? I'm here for matters of the faith, you could say. I understand. Well, best of luck with that. Hello, Rolf. Hey, look, I'm pretty busy here. Not really a good time to talk. This can't wait. You heard about your brother, right? It's a small town, what do you think? Sorry about your loss, but I really need to ask you some questions. <sighs> Fine. What do you know about the conduit? You know I'm a gardener, not an electrician, right? That's not... <sighs> never mind. I'm sorry, Rolf, but I have to ask you about your brother's death. I know, and I wish I had something to give you, but I don't know what happened. So you have no idea who'd want to kill Leonard? It's gotta be the nut job who killed those other people, right? It's possible, but far from certain. 
When was the last time you talked to your brother? A week and a half ago or so. Okay. How did he seem? What did you two discuss? He was his usual self, but what we talked about is private. Look, every little detail matters. What he said could be the key to finding his killer. I'm not going to betray his trust. If you want to arrest me, go ahead. But that's all I'm going to say. What can you tell me about the Church of Epos? I know for a fact that your brother was a member. So? That's not a crime. Come on, Rolf, work with me. Don't you want me to catch your brother's killer? <sighs> yes, he was a member. But I'm not. I spent 10 years trying to get him out of that place. Why would you do that? Because he changed. He became this sullen, slow, serious, fucking block of a person. He used to be so full of life, you know? I know he died just yesterday, but the Leonard I grew up with, he's been dead for a long time. I understand, Rolf. Thanks for sharing. The sole meaning of life is to serve humanity. I don't believe this. You have something for me, Rolf? I guess so. You know, you're the last person I was expecting. Was my brother a police informant? Uh, yeah. We were building a case, but that's all I'm at liberty to say. Shit! That's crazy. Wait here, I'll be right back. Here. Now go bury the bastard that killed my brother. I'll do my very best. Got rid of the note. No need to hold on to that. Let's see here. There was an audio tape and a few documents inside. These look like surveillance reports. It seems that Leonard was investigating Carl, Katerina, and Maya. The museum, the junk heap, and the apartment at Mimir Road are all mentioned as locations of interest. Leonard must have followed them around town and documented their activities. There's not much new to me in here, but there's mention of multiple tape recordings. Maybe they can offer some other clue to the killer. I need to figure out some way to play that tape. This tape is in pretty bad shape, but I might be able to do something with this machine here. All right, looks like the machine has analyzed the tape. Maybe I can reduce some or all of this noise. more than you do, but it will keep Maya off our backs for a while. Fuck, Cap... Mel, it's too hot. Terrorist classified hot. By definition, we're terrorists now. No. Don't be dr... I can't shake the feeling that someone is onto us. We've been careful. You're imagining things, Carl. <sighs> Maybe. I can't wait to be done with all of this and just go be a family. Me either, my love. Me either. Did you get the package? Yes. Had a look inside. CPUs, neural cores, major third-degree violations. I don't like it any more than you do, but it will keep Maya off our backs for a while. Fuck, Cap... 
Mel. It's too hot. Terrorist classified hot. By definition, we're terrorists now. Don't be dramatic. We'll keep our heads down, let Maya have her fun, then eject from this whole mess. <sighs> Things used to be so simple around here. Things, Carl. <sighs> Maybe. Interesting. If only I knew where it was recorded. Must be the chimes I heard on Leonard's tape. That means Carl and Katarina were here when they were recorded. I should have a look around. Hmm, I wonder. There's something taped here under the bench. A tape recorder. This must be what Leonard used to record Carl and Katarina. There's still a tape inside. Crap, looks like the recorder is busted. I'll just ditch it and keep the tape. about Carl. I'll find a way to make him see the value of our cause. He's a liability, Katarina. It's only a matter of time before he figures out our true plans for the vessel. Maya, just don't call our child that. What? Vessel? But that's exactly what it is. A vessel for Holdra. Don't get emotionally attached. We must put our own selfish desires aside. How many children can she not save? How much suffering can she not end? I know, Master, it's just hard. What if something went wrong? What if this is all for nothing? You need to have faith, sister. Ever since I was little, I have sung to the tune of these machines. Now, is your wrist implant working as expected? I think so. Doesn't itch anymore, at least. I'll run a diagnostic later. I also put in a little surprise. Let me guess, a bomb? Is that sarcasm? It doesn't befit you. No, a fake biometric signature. Oh, for the city trench coats? Why would one of them ever come to Nordsend? It's just precaution. We won't remain here forever. I haven't gotten us this far by avoiding contingencies, have I? I suppose not. Katarina played me good. She is one of them. I must go and confront her. He looks busy sifting through the junk. I'll leave him be. I have a bad feeling about this. 
I am well prepared for tactical engagement, Alex. There is no need for concern. If you say so, honey. Katerina? Huh? If someone is there, show yourself. Strange. Hey, Katerina, wake up. She has no visible injuries, but her pulse is extremely weak. Something must have happened. I need to go get help. From what I can gather, some kind of brain trauma has put her in a comatose state. Damn. Can you determine the extent of the damage? Difficult to say, which is typical for most brain injuries. She could wake up in five minutes. She may never wake up at all. What could have caused it? Could someone have done it to her? It's theoretically possible that she suffered a stroke, but her symptoms are eerily similar to victims of sophisticated interrogation techniques. Interrogation techniques? Like what? I'm no neurologist or nano-engineer, but from what I learned in medical school, there are advanced torture devices and energy-based weapons that can cause symptoms like this. All of them illegal, of course. Your colleagues at the Bureau may have more information about the subject. I see. I will consult my contact here in Nordsend. Perhaps she has some knowledge on the matter. Very well. I will remain here overnight and monitor this woman's vitals. Good. Thank you, Doctor. Stay frosty, Gabriel. Whoever did this to Katarina may decide to come back. I'll try, ma'am. Be careful out there. You run is drawing near. You run? You didn't hear? The storm. That's what people are calling it. Oh. Must be a big one. Hmm. No Stina. It's Stina's scarf. Tina, what the hell? Sorry, kid. Can't let you stand in my way. I should have known it was you. <gasps> Damn it. Why'd she have to get so close? No, this wasn't supposed to happen. Hold on, darling. I've got this. <coughs> Damn. The strain on my blue to keep me alive must have knocked out the ox. I've never felt this cold. I need to find a way to heat myself up before I get hypothermia. Put the firewood in place. I'll need some dry kindling, too. Partially soaked, but there are some dry parts, too. I hate to do this, but it's a matter of survival. A photo of Katerina. The glass frame is broken, but I might be able to use the shards. I've gathered a few dense tree branches, but I'll need some way of tying them together. Damn, too much wind from the east. I need to shield the campfire with something. Yeah, I might be able to tie it all together using the tape. 
All right. That should catch any wind coming from the east. Remember last time we went camping? How could I forget? What didn't go wrong that weekend? Well, we were never hit by any meteorites or struck by lightning. But other than that... <laughs> At least my friction fire skills have improved. I never thought all that survival training would ever actually pay off. Avoiding death by freezing may have been a decent incentive. You could say that. As much as I enjoy your company, I'm not quite ready to cross over to the other side. feeling again. I seem to have developed an ability to regenerate wounds, likely due to the trauma last night. No sign of my previous augmentations, though. I may need to replenish my blue to get them back. So, the conduit... They're trying to create an AI superintelligence. It would appear that way. I can see the appeal. An AI singularity would be a source of immense power. A source of immense danger as well. We don't have the third decree for nothing. Such a being would become like a god, right? It would have the power to do anything. Almost. In the long term, its capabilities would approach anything possible within the boundaries of physics. Hell. It might even be able to bring me back. The real me. In theory, yes. But given the risks involved, it would be absurd to pursue the singularity for that reason. You know what's absurd? What's pretty fucking awful? Being dead. I need to get a grip. This is just me talking to my subconscious. He's never coming back. Pull yourself together, Vera. You have a job to do. Stop right there, Agent. Now, this is unexpected. What possible reason could you have for greeting me at gunpoint? We have reason to take you into custody. Please come willingly. I assume I can't convince you two that you've been deceived? That my accuser is the guilty one? Save it for the interrogation, Agent. It seems Stina got the police on her side. I need to get out of here. Hey, up here! Looks like you got yourself in quite a pickle there, Missy. Stating the obvious won't help, Walter. Oh, I know. Sorry. Just trying to lighten the mood. Well, I'm happy you're here. At least somebody was able to evade Councilwoman Ruth's influence. Can you inform me of what happened in town? Oh, gee. I'm not sure. But I think Lady Ruth pulled a fast one on the commissary and is second in command. I overheard them saying that you were a sleeper agent or something. And that you minced that guy in the recycling center. Me? That makes no sense at all. I must find a way to clear my name when I get out. Shouldn't you try to escape first? That's kind of a prerequisite to any name clearing. Obviously. Can you assist? Hmm. Perhaps I could put on a show for the cops and make a clear path for... Quiet. Somebody is coming. Leave now. I'll look for a chance to do something. You up to something, England? Not at all. Just waiting for the interrogation. Good. Shouldn't be more than an hour or two. A 
a desperate strategy, albeit necessary. Ugh. What the hell? Jesus! What did you do to yourself? Hang in there! Oh, come on! Damn it, she's out! Got my notebook back. First things first. I need to jumpstart my lost augmentations if I'm going to have any chance of defeating Stina. The technology left behind by the Conduit members may have something I can use. Wow, you made it out! Stating the obvious much? I need to know all about your daring escape. It was a close call. I had to rely on some dangerous self-harm and, well, your distraction, I presume. Thanks for that. Anytime. Hopefully it won't take too long for you to clear up this whole mess. That would certainly be preferable. There's too much at stake. I have no doubt. Now, what can I do you for? I have to find Stina Ruth. Any idea where she might be? I often see her around this part of town, but I'm not sure where she lives exactly. I'm off. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye, police lady. Got an empty syringe. This is unfortunate. Somebody has triggered a premature birth and taken the child. An innocent life is now on the line. I better hurry up and find a way to restore my augmentations. How could you let this happen? Don't you realize how important she is? I couldn't have predicted this. Why are you getting so emotional? I'm sorry, darling, but I realize just now what the Conduit are really trying to do. We've been over this. They're trying to create an AI singularity. Not only that, they plan to contain it within the child, to bridge the gap between AI and humans. Oh, that actually sounds like a plausible theory. I know I'm right. That child would have the power to bring me back. You're presuming that this AI would do your bidding. That's a dangerous assumption. If we're the ones who awaken Huldra, she'd owe us her very existence. Please, it's our only chance. Save the child, and then save me too. I have no idea what to think anymore. The womb tank looks completely empty. Oh wait, there's some kind of switch here. looks like a vial of blue. It must have been fed into the fetal fluid. All right, it's filled with blue. A syringe filled with blue. Let's hope this works. 
Even this diluted form of blue should restore some of my previous functionality. All right, back in business. But I still need to find a way to clear my name. Maybe somebody can speak on my behalf. Looks like the fetal fluid from the tank. Command was adamant, and I saw fit not to ask questions. Makes no difference to me, standing guard here or at the train station, as long as I can feed my kids. At the very least, we're less exposed to the weather in here. Afraid your pretty beard might get all ruffled up? You'd see what it's like for yourself, Kulla, if your face ever matured past puberty. Ha! Touché! Anyway, our school teacher here, is she expected to, like, wake up? I was informed that she's fully comatose. We are to guard her from the fugitive. This snooze is the best. I can't get enough of it. Why a person would voluntarily put a toxic brown lump in their mouth is beyond me. You don't know what you're missing, man. Uh-oh. For crying out loud. Relax. Must be a blown fuse. Ahead for the door. Don't take too long, all right? I have a bad feeling about this. I won't. Shouldn't be too difficult to find that fuse box. It's filled with cannulas. Those little needle things used to connect an IV. Got one. A portable medical... Okay, now what? Uh, uh. Hey, what's that? You awake? Barely. Wh why is it so dark in here? Uh, we're working on it. Hang tight, I'll go get help. Katarina? Can you hear me? Ow, oh, yeah, barely. Oh, my head is killing me. Who's asking? Hang on, I'll get some light in here. Christ, that's bright. There. Who did this to you, Katarina? That hag. What's her name? The foul-mouthed woman at City Hall? Stina Ruth? Yeah. I need you to tell the police what you just told me. That will give us a mandate to go after her. I don't know about that. Sounds like you need my help, sister. What's in it for me? The possibility of having your offspring return to you, for one. Wait, what? Did something happen? Yes. Somebody triggered a premature birth and kidnapped your child. No. Fuck. Okay, I'll help. She came out of nowhere touched my forehead and everything went black. My knees caved and, and I could feel something greedily carving through my mind, nibbling at my memories. It was terrifying. Are you certain that this assault was done by Stina Ruth? I'm positive. I saw her clearly. Strangely enough, she didn't seem to care about hiding from me at all. Did you get a sense of what information she was looking for? Not really, but the whole process felt frantic. Rushed. Hmm. Why do you think she even left you alive? Fuck if I know. Maybe she was interrupted or she just assumed I would never wake up. This testimony certainly improves your case, Agent, but I'm still not convinced. Elaborate, please. I'm struggling to see why this information wouldn't be enough to rescind my arrest order. Look, 
A longtime trusted member of our community has accused you, an outsider, of murdering Leonard Dahl on behalf of terrorists. Now you are relying on a suspected member of this terrorist cell to clear your name. Surely you can see what the problem is. It's impossible for me to have committed that murder. I was in my quarters all night. Can anyone corroborate that? I had the evening shift. I saw her enter her room at around 10. That's a start. Who took your place during the night shift? I did, Commissary. No one came in or out of the police station until early morning. <sighs> Why am I hearing about all of this now? With all due respect, sir, no one tells me anything. I didn't know it was important. Well then, I have to admit that we no longer have grounds for an arrest. I'm releasing you from custody, Agent. I'm glad you are starting to see reason. Yes, my apologies. There was something unnatural about the Councilwoman. It was very convincing. How would you like to proceed? Stina is an ex-agent and extremely dangerous. Given my training and background, I'm best suited to deal with her. Stay vigilant and be on the lookout, but do not engage with her unless you have no other choice. I will handle her alone. Understood. Oh, and before I forget, here's your weapon. Good. I'll need that. Thanks. Let's meet up later at the station. You'll leave a deputy to keep an eye on her, yeah? She's far from harmless. Of course. Now, with that out of the way, it's time for us to have a serious talk. <sighs> Can't wait, sister. It's in your best interest to cooperate. The faster you answer my questions, the faster I can pursue the kidnapper. Fine. Ask your questions then. Sure, but one thing needs to be taken care of first. Your wrist implant. You're in luck. I can't feel it anymore, so the doctor must have taken it out. You know anything about that, deputy? Uh, yeah. Dr. Pearson had some theory about a foreign object in her body causing the coma. He cut out a small device from her arm. Noted. I'll have to ask him about that when I'm done here. We are ready for a formal interrogation, then. Are you trying to resurrect AI? What do you think? Did you happen to skip past the conduit section in all those textbooks of yours? I know them by heart, but I'm more curious about your logical reasoning. You must know that AI almost destroyed our entire civilization. AI had nothing to do with that. Alarmists and doom prophets were responsible. The old world was a place of wonder, you know? Limitless wealth and prosperity, and we threw it all away. You're omitting the looming threat of our own destruction. Human evolution, even with genetic engineering, stands no chance of catching up with an AI singularity. Why would we even need to catch up? Are we really that scared of anything greater than us? People treat AI as some outside force with an intent to destroy us all. AI is our own creation, our progeny. What sane parent would fear their children surpassing them? We're still seeing things through the eyes of the fucking primitive predators we really are. Kill or be killed. Anything remotely resembling a threat must be destroyed. You're incorrect. It was simple self-preservation. <sighs> I used to be just like you. I wish Maya was alive. She could have helped you understand. I am more open-minded than you might think. Why don't you give me a chance? What's the point? You'll only use the information against me. You'll take my child away or worse. If you want my confession, you have it. Yes, I'm guilty of trying to save humanity. Yes, I'm guilty of trying to awaken Huldra, what you'd call an AI superintelligence powered by a singularity. I have a recording where Maya called your child a vessel for Huldra. You're trying to create a human-AI hybrid, right? <sighs> You're wasting time. I'll tell you everything when my daughter is safe in my arms. Until then, I'm not saying another word. Keep up the good work, Deputy. Sorry about the whole jail thing. Trying my best, ma'am. And, uh, yeah, you really pulled a fast one on me there.
Dr. Pearson? Ah! Whoa, relax. Don't sneak up on me like that. Sorry about that. I was told you found something in Katarina's arm. Oh, yes. A small tubular implant right here. Thanks. Have you been able to determine what it does? No, I can't make head nor tails of it. I'd suggest asking an engineer. Fair enough. Have you checked the other bodies for similar objects? Hmm. Maya had a peculiar wound on her wrist, but no implant. It is possible that the killer cut it out. And Carl? Alas, he was cremated before I got a chance. The next of kin was really fussy about that. Damn. Where are the ashes? Still in the oven. I was about to collect them. That one? No, the one in my kitchen. Excuse me? I'm joking. You really need to lighten up, you know? I'll worry about that when the case is solved. Excuse me, doctor. Wow, the implant is still intact. It must be made of some strong materials. Looks like her address is at 5 Lindgren Street. I think that's up the stairs opposite Walter's shop. A diploma for a specially distinguished service, signed by the bureau director. It's probably from back when Stina retired. An old badge from when Stina was a police officer in the city. That's the biggest bottle of booze I have ever seen. Various items to care for a baby. Stina must be the kidnapper. A discarded beer bottle. I don't need to mess with that. A number of empty glass vials in a neat package. Whoa. If those vials were filled with pure blue, Stina has one serious addiction. A smoker, too? It seems that Stina is a woman of many vices. There's a tape player on the table. No tape inside. Looks like this hasn't been functional for a while. There were a couple of tapes here. Report number three. After roughly a month of surveillance, I am sure there are no more than three people in the group. The leader and the young couple. I have been unable to determine the location of their mainframe, but it must be in one of the key locations here in Nordsund. They rarely go down to the ground. The shack and the junk heap appears to be connected to a large makeshift antenna, so they may have access to long-range communications. The leader keeps referring to her wrist implant as a key, but I'm not sure to what. In any case, we should make sure to obtain it when we strike. We're starting to reach a point where we know enough to take action. Let's meet after dark at the usual place and discuss our options. Leonard, signing off. <sighs> I know what you said, but I can't wait any longer. They're getting too close. The child will be born in a matter of weeks. 
If they finalize Project Huldra, it'll be the end of us all. I'll take care of their leader first. I've gained her trust, so it shouldn't be hard to get along with her. As for the child, the host, God forgive me, but it is an abomination. I will do what needs to be done. Make sure you destroy these tapes. If things go wrong, I don't wish for any blame to fall on you or my church. You have taught me much, Councilwoman. If I fail, I trust you'll find a way to resume my sacred duty. Goodbye. So, if Leonard killed the Conduit members, who killed Leonard? That's some shaky aim. Withdrawal? Those empty vials tell quite a story. I better try to track her. She can't stay cloaked forever. Reef, that's a huge bird. Even if you defeat me, the Bureau will send everything they've got. Fuck it! Damn you, Leonard! Trying to rationalize your own vile actions, are you? I assume you took his life. Of course I did. That brainwashed idiot forced my hand. I just wanted to steal their technology, and he decided to go on a fucking killing spree. You don't get it, Vera. We're both living on borrowed time. Blue clings on to you. You'll never be free. You'll see. The only way is to give in and let it absorb you, consume you. The key to our full potential is right here. If you join me, I'll show you how. I'll show you everything those mindless drones at the Bureau try to hide from us. I'll only accept your surrender or defeat, Stina. <laughs> Time for you to earn your stripes then. Give it your best shot. <laughs> That's cute. You don't think I can see through it? look lethal. I'd advise you to make your peace with the inevitable. Before you 
ask. The baby is okay. I'm not a fucking monster. Good. Why'd you even bring it here? I thought it would unlock this damn mainframe. Since my stupid implant didn't work, she sure had a thing for... <coughs> security protocols. You can consider the case. <sighs> Closed. Leonard took out the conduit members. Then I put him down like the rabid dog he was. What's more important than my petty little life is what you do with what's on that computer. It contains the code to Holdra, right? A powerful AI? <clears throat> yes. Adapted for a blue bio circuit. I thought I would be the one to merge with. Stina? Good job, my love. She had to go. I wish I could understand what she was trying to do. We'll probably never know. No point in thinking about it. I need to gain access to the mainframe. It's the key to ending all of this. Yes. Project Holdra is in our grasp. You know what to do. She had another wrist implant in her pocket, likely Maya's. Soldier's kernel is functional, but all my hybrid simulations have failed. The host always suffers from massive cognitive dissonance. We're likely dealing with an interface problem. Ordinary adult augmentation simply won't provide enough bandwidth for a successful cognitive symbiosis. I've been researching prenatal augmentation, and my initial findings look promising. Synchronizing the growth of a nervous system with an early introduction of blue may be the key. The young woman I have come in contact with has shown herself to be bright, dedicated, and loyal. She is willing to offer a child for our cause. The next step is to find a father, but we have to be selective. We can't risk this man exposing our activities. I also finally managed to acquire a sample of blue, but I am not proud of the things I had to do to get it. I just hope my city contact made it out alive. We've just finished the work on the womb tank. I'm still skeptical about this Carl, but Katarina assures me she can keep him on a leash. He seems like the jumpy paranoid type. I'll play along for now, but it's likely only a matter of time before he becomes a liability. Anyway, the tank needs some further testing, but it won't be long until we can attempt an artificial insemination. While we wait for the vessel to mature, I've established a self-destruct mechanism called the Fenrir Protocol. If we are ever compromised, it can be used to prevent our sacred work from falling into the wrong hands. The program will completely wipe all drives and backups. We can't risk our foes using Holdra for evil. It could well lead to the destruction of this entire planet. Yes, that's it. Complete Project Holdra.
Ever since you went away, I've been lost. It's like you took a part of me with you, and it left a void. I feel your pain, darling. I'd do anything to make you whole again. I know, but I get it now. This is what I am supposed to do. Holdra has the power to change everything. Not only for us, but for all the people out there like us. It's time to stop fighting the future. It's time to embrace it. It's marvelous. You did it, my love. I'm so proud of you. Thank God, is that... Is that her? Is she okay? Your child is unharmed. You must be recovering fast, given your transfer here. I'm all right. The headaches are almost gone, and I'm getting my energy back. What happened to Stina? Deceased. I had to eliminate her. Well, then. Can't say I'm sorry to see her go. I took no pleasure in her death. She simply left me with no choice. Now, look at your child, Katerina. Don't you think her eyes are a captivating shade of... blue? I... see what you mean. I'm glad she turned out that way. Just the way I imagined. Good. Now, I think you're well enough to travel. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely. I'm, uh... ready to face the consequences of my actions. I'll take it from here, deputy. Open the cell, please. Uh, I wasn't informed of that, agent. I'm informing you now. I'm bringing her to the city so she can stand trial. Oh, okay. Just a moment. How much longer now? About a day's walk, at the most. And you're absolutely sure that we can trust these people? I'm sure. Maya vouched for them. We'll be safe until my daughter is ready. And then, my love, we can finally be reunited. <laughs>